What's up, strongest men, women, and children from blocks all around the world? I am my block strongest man, here with my esteemed co-host Isaac from Hunger Smash Fitness, and a guest panel, a star-studded guest panel this evening. We have Phoebe Torres Fisher, Liz D'Amato, and Willie Wessels, the founder and president of United States Strongman. Welcome, everybody. Happy Thanks to be here. <laughs> Thank you. And we're, and we're also here. waiting on uh, John Albrecht, VP in USS. So uh, we're here tonight to talk about a big announcement. But why don't we uh, why don't we tease it a little bit? So Willie, tell us a little bit about how was USS founded in the first place? What was your brainchild there, and kind of what's the mission? Well, real simple. Uh, I used to run North American Strongman, the other company, which has since changed their name to Strongman Corp. I ran that for ten years. Uh, I inherited that uh, company from Bill Holland out of. Uh, Fort Worth, Texas. And with that, um, you know, I, I kind of inherited what, some of what Bill took and then I expanded upon it. Um, then after I left that company in 2012, um, I founded USS in 2014 uh, and basically with the objective of doing something similar but better. And that's kind of what we've done. That's fantastic. And then how did you come up with kind of the, the split out of having reps in each state? Like, how does that infrastructure work? I know, Liz, you're the New Jersey rep and Phoebe, you're the Virginia rep. So kind of how does that whole structure work and, and interplay with each other in the kind of grand scheme of, of USS as a whole? Well, the fact that I live in St. Louis, Missouri, um, I, I obviously don't know Virginia as well as Phoebe or I don't know New Jersey as well as Liz. So they are my eyes and ears in those states. So they represent their state. Uh, they run their state. They represent it. So if someone in their state says, hey, Phoebe or hey, Liz, I want to have a show in New Jersey or Virginia, they have to talk to them first before they come to me. Or if they come straight to me, I send them straight back to their state rep so they can work out details, dates, make sure shows aren't overlapping each other, make sure they're picking the right weights and the divisions that and the weights that fit those divisions. Um, so, yeah, they're my eyes and ears across the country. Awesome. And a uh, quick hello to world's strongest blacksmith in the crowd, Tyler Haynes. What's up, Tyler? Thanks for supporting us once again. This is going to be a great one. Bring all your best questions for, uh, for our guest panel today. So, um, yeah, Liz and I were actually talking recently kind of before this ever came up because I live in New Jersey. So we were thinking about doing some collaborations together as well. So really excited for the potential for that in the future. Um, Liz, how did you first get involved with USS and, uh, and uh, kind of with wh what Willie has put together? So like many other people, I did come into Strongman um, by way of CrossFit. So one of my friends kind of put me in contact with a CrossFit gym that was in my area. Um, this was prior to me having my daughter, um, got very involved in that. Right before I got pregnant with my daughter, I started testing out some of the um, Atlas Stone events, some of the tire flips, um, kind of fell into those wads as ones that I loved. Um, so after I had my daughter, I spoke to my, um, strength and conditioning coach and was asking about like, how do we do this just all the time? Like, I don't want to do the gymnastics. I don't want to do as much of the cardio and the running. And he said, well, there is strong man, <laughs> like a real strong man. So I actually got connected with Kale Beck, who we all know from starting strong man. Um, he kind of pointed me in the direction of some local gyms that do strong man. And, um, my first show was New York strongest. New York's strongest man and woman, um, Todd Georgie's show. And I've just fallen in love ever since. So that's been how I started. Awesome. Yeah, Kale's a great guy. It's a kind of a small circle, right? I got connected to Kale Beck because I interviewed Jessica Fithin. So it's kind of a small circle there. Phoebe, how about you? How did you first get involved with uh, U USS? Well, I kind of came in similar to like how Liz did. Um, I was a fitness instructor before I got into CrossFit around like 2009, 2000 time frame. And then in 2012, I joined Brute Strength Gym, which is like this legendary powerlifting and strongman gym in Norfolk, Virginia. Um, and immediately I was attracted to strongman because it was like a, a strongman mecca. Um, there were just like groups of guys, groups of, you know, just Basically, you just got sucked in, <laughs> and like uh, I, it's, it's something like somebody challenged me to do the circus dumbbell one day. Like, oh, come over here, you crossfitter! I bet you can't do this. So I went over and I just got it on the first try, and they were like, "Okay, you're one of us now." So like, I just kind of got sucked into it. Um, that was 2012, 2013. I had my first competition. I took first, and immediately I was like, "I'm going to nationals." Um, I met Willie um, there, and actually, I think I met you. At at my first competition ever, you judged for me. And then at nationals, I saw you again. Um, I took third that year, 
just, you know, brand new, took third place, came out of nowhere. No one knew me or anything. Um, from there, just kept on competing. Um, and then the opportunity came up, you know, after Willie really started USS, the opportunity came up for me to become a state rep because um, I've been coaching and training and competing. And I kind of messaged Willie. I was like, hey, <laughs> uh, what do you think about this? And he was like, yeah, you know, if you, if you want to run shows and stuff. A year later, he was like, hey, do you want to do this for real? Um, that was in 2018. And I've been Virginia State rep ever since, um, and the only one. And it's just been fantastic. It's been awesome. I love the sport. I love what Willie's doing for women in the sport. I'm just happy to be a part of this, you know, whatever, supporting his ideas and whatever it is going forward, you know, it's just been awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that was kind of one of my missions, too. I felt like the um, the women's portion of the sport was underserved, so I've been trying my best to uh, bring a lot of attention there, as has Isaac, and uh, definitely we're, we're aligned there for sure. Kudos to you, Phoebe, though, for uh, being naturally good at one of the most technically difficult events in Circus Dumbbell, though. Oh, oh, <laughs> so kudos, kudos to you. It was definitely the CrossFit background, I have to say. <laughs> we did a lot of clean and jerk. So that like that was like, oh, I can do a one arm version of that. So. <laughs> there you go. No, that like, you know, I'm I'm terrible at all this stuff, but I like circus dumbbell. I I just do it with a fat grip on a regular dumbbell. And uh I was just totally terrible at it until Leif Angles gave me some tips and uh Anthony San Lorenzo gave me some tips and now I'm a uh, little better than terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think we're going to run with uh, Phoebe's idea now. We're going to make all CrossFitters come in. They have to do the circus dumbbell first. <laughs> then they. Can do I, I love it. I love it. That's the new requirement. I love it. <laughs> Initiation time. Awesome, awesome. Willie, did you compete at all, or um, or have you been focused kind of on the business side of things? Oh yeah, I've, I've been competing since 1985. Fantastic. Um, Unfortunately, I am that old uh, that I've been around. It's funny you mentioned Kale Beck. You know, Kale Beck used to compete with uh, my company, North American Strongman. And then later, uh, you know, he developed, started Strongman. Uh, Jessica Fitton won our 2017 Super Heavyweight Division uh, at USS Nationals and now is doing all kinds of great things herself. So we kind of have roots that kind of spread out everywhere as we go. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Jessica's amazing. I think everybody knows I think that. But uh, yeah, that's awesome. So, uh, Willie, when you first got into it, what was your favorite event that just kind of drew you into uh, into Strongman more than anything else that you said, I really have to do that? Well, I can honestly say it certainly wasn't the events. It was the fact that it's athletic. Uh, you know, my first contest was in powerlifting in 1985 because Strongman just wasn't available here in the U.S. at the time. And I, I powerlifted from 85 through 97, got pretty decent at that. Uh, and then in 97, if you recall, World's Strongest Man finally came back to America. It was in Las Vegas uh, because Franco Colombo got hurt back in the early 80s. Uh, he sued IMG, TW, uh, uh, IMG, uh, whatever they're called. Uh, the company owns World's Strongest Man and won. And they were so mad. They said they would never have it in America again. So <laughs> they waited a lot of years there and they finally brought it back in 97. Well, Bill Holland launched North American Strongman right around the same time. So it gave some avenues for people to jump in and do that. And like I said, I was an athlete first, uh, powerlifter second, which kind of tied right into Strongman. So it was pretty, you know, most things were fairly easy for me. It was more the conditioning that killed me at first. I think you're still muted, John. Oops. Sorry, you hear me now? Yeah, <laughs> I was go. trying to read your lips there. I, I wasn't quite in it though. <laughs> yeah, maybe I was talking too fast. I was, I was saying you learn something new every day. I didn't know that about Franco. So he sued over the refrigerator carry injury incident. Yes, he did. And if, of course, the Franco. If you ask Franco, of course you can't now. But if you ask Franco back then, he said I dislocated my knee. I I'm like, that's why, I that's why I'm surprised. I remember that exactly. I watched it not too long ago again, and that's why I'm surprised you say that. Yeah, he's a chiropractor, so he knew. <laughs> You know, yes. See, you, you know all the good quotes. <laughs> That's awesome. So should we transition over into talking about how Nationals went this weekend, what your plans were, and how it all panned out according to uh, to your vision? Well, I can tell you, those two young ladies on the screen, you know, were a huge help this weekend. Um, they, they've actually got even a bigger role in USS now, and we'll talk about that in a second. But uh, USS Nationals, after having a year off, you know, we were supposed to be in Minnesota in 2020. Due to the pandemic, we had to postpone it to 2021. 
Um, of course, the restrictions then came out of the books. You can't have more than uh, 200 people at one time. So Tim and I were talking back in January. We're like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And I said, well, why don't we do two sessions? We'll just, we can still have 400 people. We can do two, 200 in the morning, 200 in the afternoon. And he's like, done, let's do it. And people seem to really like it. It actually turned out pretty darn good. And we had a lot of fun. It was still a ton of work, but the athletes, you know, they got four hours. They got to take a break, come back and watch uh, some of their friends compete for four hours. So it, it yeah. went off. It really went off pretty much without a hitch. We had a couple stones break, but we addressed it. Everybody still loaded the same amount of stones. So it was a level playing field for everybody. Yep, I know the stone guy, uh, Andrew, pretty well. So uh, we were talking about that earlier today. By the way, Jacob Fisher in the uh, comments says it's the best contest ever. Uh, I'll tell you <laughs> what, we had... That. Yeah, he better, right? <laughs> Phoebe, you owe him some money now. No, uh, let me tell you what, that guy, and not just because that's Phoebe's uh, husband, let me tell you what, he busted his butt. I had more people come up to me saying... I don't know who that guy is there. What's his name? The guy with the tattoos on his head. <laughs> and they go, he worked so hard. Everybody was impressed with his, uh, how hard he worked at check-ins and then during the show. Yeah. He, he's an amazing guy. Yeah. He's, he's a workhorse. And like when we run our contest here, I mean, he's the same way. I mean, you can't get him to stop. He's just like, he's got an engine. It's just He just keeps going. It was pretty, it was pretty awesome. I mean, at he, one says point, the I put my feet up, but. <laughs> he says the stones weren't his fault. <laughs> yeah. They were not. They were not. They, I don't think they quite cured enough. And then they had the centerpiece. They had the middle was a little bit too soft. And so when they hit, I mean, you know, the concrete, usually a solid floor will beat a solid stone any day. Yeah, it's just physics, I suppose. Yes, sir. But yeah, no, it, it went great. Tim Kovach and Sue Kovach did an amazing job. Of course, they won't take the credit. They're going to say everybody else did a great job, but they set it up. You know, they brought the superstar cast of judges that we had there, you know, with uh, Chad Coy, David Oslin, Carl Gillingham, uh, Nick and Callie Best, uh, uh, the Dirks, uh, Kim and Ab Dirks. I mean, we were loaded front to back. And then, you know, we had so many of our state reps there. And then people who were there either have, you know, participated, helped out at contests. We had very few novice helpers, so it made everything go off so good. Yeah, Justin Langhout, who competed there as a buddy of ours, and he was telling me he met Nick Best. I didn't realize he was a judge, so that's that's really cool. Oh, yeah, these guys, well, you know, Nick came up through my old company. Uh, David Oslin came up through my old company. Carl Gillingham, I've known since powerlifting. I think we were at a show together in 94. Uh, so, I mean, most of these guys, you know, Chad Coy and I have known each other, I think, since 98, and been competing together since then. So I knew all these guys and uh, they're, they're all good guys. And they, they got, you know, they understand what we want as a judge. We want a judge who helps the athletes. And I told them all guys, you run your lane. You, know, you want to talk, talk to all the athletes and show them exactly what you expect and lift. You tell them that, you know, if, if they're not locking it out, right. Tell them, lock it out, lock it out. Once they lock it out, then you give them the down signal. So we want to help the athletes do, be, do a good job and be successful. Yeah, Chad Coy was a judge at the Shaw Classic last year, too. His reputation is uh, unquestioned, right? An incredibly uh, positive reputation for Chad Coy. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. It's, it's good to have him around. And play, I mean, the guy, the guys. Yeah. Phenomenal. Let's see. So Danielle in the comments is also saying it really was the best ever so fast and organized. Uh, Jessica Mitchell. Oh, my buddy Jessica is here. Your buddy too, Phoebe. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> loved how efficiently everything ran. By the way, uh, Willie, I got to say, I love the championship belts. It's such a cool touch. Uh, I saw the post with Jessica wearing hers, and I'm like, we, we've had her on this stream before. I said, I got to have you on again so I can give you, like, the big boxing wrestling introduction with, now that you have that belt. That was, uh, that was something, you know, coming out of my old company. You know, I, a lot of awards we get, you know, we get swords, we get these little trophies and uh, plaques and stuff, which are cool. Don't get me wrong. They're nice. But man, I'm like, what can we do to up the on Annie here? And somebody could have something, you know, someone like Phoebe or Liz, that's something they could have. And then when they're grandmothers someday, <laughs> you know, their, their grandchildren will be like, is that your belt? You know, 50 years later, that belt's still going to be there and it's going to be really cool looking. So, you know, we use the same company too, that uh, UFC and uh, WWE. Yeah. I mean, you can tell the quality is incredible just by looking at it. I think it was uh, Robert Hughes who won our uh, 181 uh, lightweight division out of Idaho. Yeah. He, I saw him at the airport the next morning and he goes, man, I was going to wear it in the airport, but it's just too heavy. <laughs> Robert Hughes gives you a big, uh, 
bicep pose. There you go. Oh, the we even is, had some of the guys. We even had some of the guys wearing it at the bars that night. We went out afterwards and saw a few of them trying to pick up some chicks with them. So <laughs> I don't, I don't know if it worked for any of you guys, but <laughs> that's luck. a new move. I think I'm trying to remember who it was. It might have been Tim Kobach back in 2015. One of the guys who got one of the earlier belts said they went out and they didn't pay for a drink all night. There's some perks. I think you're muted again, John. But I was, Jessica, I was gonna say too, though, uh, having a good prize for a competition makes a huge difference. Because I've had, I've done a couple comps where you just get this little, you know, like piece of plywood with something attached or whatever and you're like ah that's cool but it doesn't mean anything when you have actually something like big solid that you can that you can wear or that you can show off like it totally it brings the whole competition to another level oh i agree and then we gave out a thousand dollars uh scholarship to each belt winner so there's eight grand oh, wow. right there that, that we nice. gave out so they can compete anywhere with uss contests or uss affiliate contests all over the u.s and all over the world and get money back just, I'm just interested from a business standpoint, Willie. How do you go about generating budget to kind of, uh, you know, the belts aren't cheap, right? That's that's obvious. No. Like, how do you, how, from from a business standpoint, like, how do you uh, how do you gather funds and kind of generate budget to be able to uh, to give out these sorts of things? Well, you know, obviously, a lot of sponsorships are involved. Um, initially, when I started USS, most of it was right out of my own pocket because nobody knew who we were. And but I didn't mind, you know, and it just generates money. And money we bring in, like we sell T-shirts. Hats, shorts, jackets, we can take that money and go out and buy things like belts. Uh, you know, we can have prize money at shows. You know, I, I, I honestly don't do this for the money. I am a retired school teacher, so I've got a nice pension. So th this is actually fun, and I actually do love the sport. And, uh, you know, even though I still compete, I still – and it gives us, you know, all of us. Actually, all of my uh, board members all still compete. And so we get a different perspective uh, on when we make decisions, we you know we definitely think of it from an athlete's point of view. So that's why we go by the uh, hashtag FABA for athletes, by athletes. Yeah, definitely a valuable perspective for sure. So, Liz, Phoebe, what are your uh, thoughts on how everything went over the weekend? What were kind of some standout uh, activities or events for you? I agree that the split going AM and PM worked out really well. We had some awesome feedback from husbands and wives, actually, that one was able to go in the morning and, you know, be an actual spectator, not have to worry about like, OK, my heat's done. Let me run over here and cheer for so and so. So a lot of people enjoyed being able to cheer on their friends, um, you know, their peers, um, significant others. So that was really great. And I couldn't believe how fast the morning went. Like all of us were like, are we going to take a nap before the next session? Yeah. Like this just there was so much time and they treated the helpers so well the food came right on time because you know we all love the food so we were all excited about being able to take a big break and you know get ready for the next um session it it just worked out flawlessly so i give it to tim and sue they did an awesome job yeah it was uh it was pretty fantastic i would say the way even uh the organization of the volunteers and the helpers and the the, the uh the judges um we all had our assigned duties and jobs and everyone just you know show each other a lot of respect and worked really well together uh, me and my husband, we worked both the morning session and the second session, which there was a switch in in the uh, in the helpers. And uh, in the morning, we were with Kim Dirks. In the afternoon, we were with Chad Coy. Both were just fantastic. Um, the way that they treated the athletes, it, the communication, it just ran so smooth. I mean, you couldn't really ask for a better show than what we had this past weekend. That's awesome. And did I read correctly that there were 400 competitors? Uh, we actually had like 450 signed up. And then with wow. you know, people dropping out due to injury, due to graduation. Actually, we had one of our team champions who graduated the night before and then came to compete the next day. And he won. Wow. Cooper. That was real That's impressive. Awesome. I told him he should have wore his robe and cap and gown, all that stuff, to the contest. We could have thrown his tassel up in the air or something. I don't know. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe we can talk to Cer Cerberus and get him to start making tacky gowns, you know, so then you can yeah. graduate and then go do stones. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Yeah, you could tell Tim and Sue both with their jobs are kind of project managers because the way it was set up, you, you could definitely see that.
That's awesome. Yeah, kudos to you for being able to uh, organize something in such a large scale and, you know, to all of your reps for executing. Yeah, if it wasn't for the pandemic, we probably would have had close to 600 people this year. How, ma how many were there? Which, uh, which last year was canceled. Yeah, you said last year was canceled. How many were there in 2019? Oh, we, uh, if we would have had 19, we had 473. Wow. So it's always huge. Yeah, and we were. Yeah, we were on pace to go well over 500. I think in New Hampshire next year up in Manchester, we'll probably be pushing five to 600 athletes. Wow. And what's uh, under normal circumstances, what's kind of the uh, the crowd situation? Usually you have a decent number of spectators. Well, in uh, Manchester, the stadium we're going to be in sits seats, 14,000 people. Uh, and they're planning on at least getting at least half full. So that'll wow. be a rocking crowd, which is always fun as an athlete to hear the crowd cheering for you. Yeah, that's awesome. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll take a ride up from New Jersey. Go watch. Yeah, there you go. I was going to say, are you going to do uh, like a vendor You're situation? So. Um, provide like food and everything Oh, yeah, else? we got uh, – uh, with the uh, – Yeah, with the, went down with the restrictions lightening up, and obviously by next year they'll be gone. Uh, so then we'll be able to do so much more with all the vendors, food being available. It'll be, it'll be almost a circus atmosphere. Yeah, the um, I'm gonna make it a road trip. JF Caron uh, invited me to uh, his gym up in Quebec, so I'll hit New Hampshire first on the way, and then right up to Quebec. Yeah, yeah, to get see if he'll come down. He can come out and hang out with us. Hell yeah, he's the nicest guy. I don't know if you've ever met him. He's the nicest guy. He sure is. He's yeah. a super guy. I've been up to Canada a few times for shows in the past, and yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah. By the way, we got Justin Manning in the crowd representing Colorado. Uh -oh. Representing Colorado. Woo! Yeah. And Justin's our one of our is our rep in uh, Colorado. Yeah, we've had him on. We did a Colorado show with Justin Tanner Manthe, uh, Steve Foshin. Who else did we have on that show? Um, Isaac, do you remember? Did, did, you, did you have Anthony on there? You got yeah, you were talking yeah, about Anthony. Anthony's a buddy of mine. Mm -hmm. uh, San Lorenzo, you're talking about, right? Yeah, a Anthony used to be our state rep, and then uh, oh, Justin took right. over for him. Anthony got busy with work stuff, all that good stuff. I forgot about that. Yeah, you're right. Anthony originally is from like my town or very close to it, so uh, I always bug him about when he comes home for Christmas. He's like, I'm going to walk down the street with him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I tell you what, yeah, he's become quite a little athlete out there in Colorado, and uh, he still comes and helps out at all of Justin's shows. He's usually one of our lane judges. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I heard he's a tough judge. We were, ta we were talking to uh, the women of Blacklist, when was it, like a week or two ago, Isaac, and they were saying he's a tough judge, a tough but fair. Yeah, I, I think yeah. that's why it's so important. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was going to say that was another great show because we did the Women of Blacklist. And so we had uh, five, five, four of the athletes from Blacklist on there. And that was fun. That was two weeks ago. I think we did that one. Yeah. Yeah, we, we love to keep uh, one weight class with one judge all day. Uh, we think that's important because now, you know, if, if a judge is super strict, he's super strict with everybody in that class. If he's really lenient, he's lenient with everybody in that class. I think when you run head to head, you know, two, three, four wide. Now you've got potentially four different opinions judging somebody. Uh, so one judge may be a little tougher, one may be a little easier, and that could, you know, turn out to cause a few complaints. So we don't want that. By the way, just uh, going back to the championship belt idea, seems like Jessica had no problems with TSA. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's great. <laughs> Awesome. So they should have gave her first class for that. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so I don't know. What do you think, Willie? Enough with the preamble. Do you want to go ahead and make the big announcement that we've all come here to hear that not even Isaac and, o and I know what it is? So uh, we're waiting with bated breath to kind of uh, hear, as I'm sure all of the audience is. Yeah. What do you think? Well, this, this all started uh, with talking to my board, and you have two of our members of our board right here, our, our female advisory board for USS, and then I've got uh, John Albrecht and Steve Barkley, my other two board members. 
And the five of us kind of bounced it around for a while and, and worked out some details. And then we announced it to all of our state reps. And uh, we got a lot of positive feedback from them and a few suggestions. So once it was all said and done, we came up with the first ever USS Pro class is being launched. We are going to have you, you're going to have an opportunity to earn a pro card, the United States Strongman. Awesome. All the so details. Have, yes. What, what are the details? How does this work? When, where does it happen? <laughs> well, how, do, how does it happen? Tell us. All the details, John Albrecht already posted up on the website, unitedstatesstrongman.com. They are there. He's already launched that. I was, I was surprised I didn't get a couple of uh, calls or texts on that already. He did about an hour before we started this. Uh, but now yeah, basically, uh, you know, with the, the pro division, it's it's actually pretty simple the way we set it up. Uh, it'll be part of the weight matrix because we do everything through ironpodium.com. Uh, you know, we work with uh, Craig and Lindsay Kilgo. That it'll be a, a added right onto the weight matrix. Uh, promoters, especially as state reps, will be the only ones allowed to do this. And, or if it's a non-rep, it has to be overseen by a rep. Um, there'll be one men's class and one women's class. And so promoters can have both or they can have one or the other. They don't have to have both. There's minimum requirements on the weights. They have to be obviously heavier than the heaviest weights. Um, and look at that. Oh, you guys are on it. Uh, they have to be heavier than the heaviest weights that you have on there. You also uh, must have at least six people competing in your class to have a shot at earning your pro status. Uh, and if you win, uh, you get to go on and compete at pro, uh, what we call USS Pro International Championships, uh, which will be held in uh, August of 2022 in Texas with Robin Esther from Big Tex Gym. And they're going to put up some serious money for that. They're excited. When you go to that show, if you make it to it, you get your pro card awarded to you on the spot. We have minimum amounts of money that have to be given out. Um, and then the cool part is from that show, there's even more. So once you've earned your pro card uh, for the top three women, they'll get invited to USS Pro Women's Worlds in 22 and other international events that I'll be securing because I'm working right now directly with Canada, Australia, and Finland. Uh, the top three men from that will get invites to SCL shows, Arnold Pro events, and any other international events I might secure in 2022, 2023. So uh, lots of opportunities. These are basically lanes or opportunities for athletes who want to take that. Not everybody wants to, but there's probably at least 10% of our athletes who would like to take a shot at that next level. And this will allow them to do that and make some money while they're at it. That's big news. So how, how many men and how many women did you say per year? Uh, well, here's the thing. There's not a limit, so it's option. So if, if a promoter like Liz or Phoebe um, would like to have this division, uh, they can. So we might have, you know, four or five of these the first year. We might have 25 of these. It's okay. As long as all the criteria is met and uh, no one's allowed to zero, if you zero and you happen to win the show, you cannot earn your pro status. But we're making things strict. We're making them heavy, and we've got certain rules and regulations you have to meet. If you make it to pro internationals, and the reason why we call internationals, uh, thank you, ladies, because they're the ones that came up with that idea. Um, we call it that so then we can invite our affiliates from other countries like Canada, Australia, Finland in to compete. Now you're starting to get that flavor of a nice international contest, which can lead to a lot of things like TV. So if it's international, do you have to change the name of USS? No, no. USS is the company put it on. So it's United States Strongman Pro International Championships. This allows us to bring other countries in. If we just said USS Pro Nationals, then there would be no one from other countries would be allowed to go. But because we added that international flavor in there, USS is just sponsoring the show, but it's going to be uh, international athletes, pro athletes from all over. And all athletes are welcome to try this. Current pros, people who want to be pros, they can jump in there, you know, make a few bucks, get a shot at going to pro internationals. And then from there, they get invited to other shows and they can make even more money. So it's, it's really the sky is the limit for them. That's awesome. And then, um, is, so is there a contest set up yet or scheduled yet that will be the first opportunity for this or not yet? No, we don't. I, at this point, we don't. Since we just launched it, we've kind of kept everything off the board. So we'll see who uh, wants to do it first. Whoever does it first, that'll get the ball rolling, and we'll see how things go. 
Isaac, you want to do it first? <laughs> I uh, I don't know if I'm ready to go there yet, but uh, maybe. Oh, I'd give it a shot, I guess. <laughs> well, and here's the cool part, Isaac. You know, as uh, you know, in USS, if you earn your pro card, you could still compete in any USS show. We don't tell people oh, all of a sudden you got your pro card, you can't do this anymore. You can do any USS show you want, whether you have your pro card or not. If Brian Shaw wants to come do a USS show, he is welcome to do it. I, I think that's a little unfair, though. Honestly, you know, it's <laughs> <laughs> a you're kind of game for them. <laughs> I can I can understand that, but wouldn't it be cool to get to compete with someone like Brian Shaw? Rub shoulders with the champ. Heck yeah. It's funny. Uh Big Laws, who, by the way, for anybody watching, I'm interviewing tomorrow. Thank you very much. Uh he mentioned, you know, if you were to pick the greatest of all time, who who would you want to lift a car off of you if you were trapped under a car? And for me, that's Brian Shaw. It's no question. Oh, when it comes to an American, yeah. I mean, you got what Shaw's a thousand pound deadlifter, Jerry Pritchard's a thousand pound deadlifter. So you got good company right there. I mean, that's it's a rarity to see that. And we've got two guys who can do it. Yep, for sure. We we, we have an amateur who could do it. Jordan Larson out of Utah. He holds our national super heavyweight record at a thousand pound bull. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, kid's strong. He just pulled this weekend at FitCon. He pulled 950. He's just getting healthy again. It's getting better. He pulled 950. It was like, like it was nothing. Look it up. Uh, Utah FitCon this past weekend. Okay. Will do for sure. Gabe Pena, too. Gabe Pena's U.S., and he's an incredible deadlifter. Oh, yeah. Gabe's got a powerlifting background. You can tell. He, he is a strong cat. Yeah, he's. Uh, I wonder if he'll get into it. He's a reserve for Worlds. I wonder if he'll get in, like, if, if anybody has uh, trouble getting in the country or whatever. Yeah, you have trouble getting a country or they get injured. That happens. A lot of alternates get in because somebody gets hurt either in warm ups or on the first event. And that's a, you know, all of a sudden those alternates are on. Yep. Let's see. What's Justin saying in the comments? Keep an eye out for Colorado, he says. Tournament of Titans 2 coming soon. All right. I think, we'll I think there's a hint there. There might be a hint there for a pro class. <laughs> I'm looking for stuff from Liz. Liz, you put on a lot of shows from what I see, so I think uh, chances are we'll see one coming from you soon. You may be right. Between Pennsylvania and New Jersey, um, myself and Mike Rosonis really do put on a lot of shows a year. Um, I think this coming year we have about four. Uh, so one or maybe two of those, there should be a, a pro class being added on pretty soon. Like Willie said, you know, we've been keeping it under wraps for a little bit. We didn't really want to announce and draw any feedback just yet until we were sure that it was ready. But I know, especially reading some of these comments, I know it may be a little confusing to some because questions like, you know, do you really need a pro card or to, to even get to that top level? That's a valid question. But what Willie and USS are trying to do is give more opportunities, different avenues to be able to reach that, that higher level. Because a lot of the feedback we've been getting you know, within USS shows, local shows is we want to be challenged. We want something more. We want to be able to, you know, win money in different ways or win different opportunities to go to other countries in different ways. So Willie literally has created a brand new avenue to give athletes at a local level a chance to get that pro card if that's important to them, or maybe kind of rub elbows with other individuals who are already pros and kind of see if their grit can win the day. You know what I mean? So that's really what, what all this means. It's not about a card per se. It's about that um, wanting to challenge yourself and just take it to the next level. Yeah, I mean, I, as I mentioned earlier, I'm really on board with kind of opening up a lot more opportunities, especially for the women, because I, I feel like, at least from what I've seen, there's a bit of a disparity currently. So the more opportunities we can open, the better. And uh, my very good friend, John Greaves III from Garage Gym Life Media is in the comments, and he has a good question. So if someone is a pro in another organization, will they have to earn their pro card or will they come in as a pro? Well, that's the cool part. If there's a pro, if there's already going to be a pro division, say at Let Liz or BB Show. They, they jump right in there. If they win that, then they're going to get, obviously, a top prize money, whatever that is. And then they get the automatic invite to USS Pro Internationals. And they'll get their pro card from us there also. So they'll have two pro cards. And it's not automatic. They don't automatically just hand it, hand it a pro card. You know, we, we give kudos to them for getting a pro card with another federation. But this is everyone starts from scratch. Everyone has a chance. So if Brian Shaw did come in and do a show, he's not a pro. 
He still has to earn his pro card. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Brian Shaw will be coming to uh, one of these shows, but you know, four-time World's Strongest Man, he's certainly welcome to. If anything, he'll probably come in. We could probably bring him in as a guest judge. That would be fantastic. Because ble believe it or not, Brian Shaw, Brian Shaw had a lot to do with the development of this. Uh, he wanted to see the gap between the top level, like Shaw Classic athletes, and the new heavyweight amateur athletes coming out close. And this is a way to close that gap. And so that gives them an opportunity maybe to get to a Shaw Classic one day. Yeah, that's a great idea. I mean, there's so many good amateurs. Uh, Matt McDougall, for example, is a beast. Um, Albert Brand is a beast. You know, like these people like that really deserve opportunity. So uh, I'm all for closing that gap as well. Yep. It just gives them another opportunity to be seen. You know, all of a sudden you're, you're now you're a international pro contest. Wow. That, you know, all of a sudden you might beat somebody from another country that uh, Brian Shaw has competed against. And he'll be like, well, this guy is actually pretty darn good. Maybe he'll get an invite. And for women specifically, this gives them another avenue as well. So right now they can win cash prizes at local shows that give it, which let's be honest, are few and far between. And then they can win it at Women's Worlds. And now they can also win it at a pro local contest and then go on to the international and win it again. So now that's three or four different avenues that females are being given that they're not really allotted in a lot of federations or just in general in strongman. You know, that's not against any other fed. It's it's. It's the truth. We don't really get that many opportunities. So this up and opens it up threefold. And it's just it's it's a fantastic. What's so great about it too is that it's it's new. We're we're starting this. It's it's something new again because there are so many new people who've come into the sport. I mean, even just this weekend, there were so many people who, you know, we never really noticed before or really heard much about before. And they were just performing, um, outperforming. I mean, they were just doing so well and um, on that, hitting a, an upper level, higher level as an athlete, this is a new avenue for them um, where, you know, three or four years ago, there were opportunities that opened up. I think it was a little bit more open back then before it started to tighten up again. Um, but here we are offering a new opportunity to get your name on the board, to earn that pro status um, with USS. Um, regardless of your history, how new you are, or how, or however experienced you are, um, and and across the board, I mean, masters included. I'm a masters athlete, so for someone like me coming in at over 40 years old, yeah, you know, I've got a a, a reasonable history. Um, however, perhaps I just never had the opportunity to actually earn a pro status um, for whatever reason here's another avenue for you. Here's another way to do it. It's, it's new. Um, it's something exciting. The opportunities and the money, the money's going to be there. Um, one of the things that Willie really kind of, as we were like uh, brainstorming and, and whatnot, you know, to call someone a pro and then not really, they're not getting paid to do it, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, what does it even mean? You know, what, what, what does it mean to be called a pro in, in other sports? A pro gets paid to do it, you know? So yeah, you know, there's money, there's pots now, but also the opportunity for them to use that status and that title to do something for themselves. You know, I'm a pro strong woman um, and a coach, you know, that's going to put you on that just a little bit more visible than someone who hasn't achieved that yet. So, you know, we're excited to offer it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think um, there, there's been a disparity for sure for the women, right? I won't say who said anything or which show, but you know, there, there have been shows where the men have been paid many multiples more. And, you know, I just think it's about time that with these additional avenues, that gap gets closed. Yeah. I mean, if USS from day one, the first group we paid were the women and we've always paid the women more than we've paid the men from day one. And still here we are in year seven doing the same thing. That's awesome to hear for sure. Jacob says, is there a minimum of athletes in the pro class? Meaning, does there have to be at least so many in the class to get the status or you don't get a pro class with only two people competing? Six. Actually, it should be on there on that on the post on the website. I believe I read that off. You have to have at least six. If there's only five, you can still, you know, win the prize money that the show's given out. The class can still run, but there will be no pro status given. Minimum of six. Yep, and by the way, Justin beat me to it. He answered <laughs> six. There you go, Justin. Justin, see, Justin knows. 
<laughs> Justin studying up, he's going to pass the exam. <laughs> there you go. You know, it's funny because I actually started the pro system with the old company. It was my idea back in 2001. I sat down with uh, then the American pro representative, Jim Davis, who recently passed away. Um, and we actually ha hacked out that idea in the first place. And, you know, looking back on that, I knew there were some things I wanted to do better than I did back then. And so now with USS, we have that opportunity. And I've got all these fresh ideas from from Liz and Phoebe and John and, and Steve. And we look at things that happened in the past. We're trying to make them better now. That's awesome. Let's see. What else do we have in the comments? Um, I think Jacob's talking to you, Phoebe. You're a pro promoter. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to he's trying to get points right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Justin says, let's see. I'll be asking Stan for sure if he'd like to compete in his backyard for it. <laughs> I don't Ooh, care. There you go. Oh, the Cotton Brothers, too. That would be awesome. They're great guys. Yeah. Yeah, I've been trying to get Tyler for a while on my show. Um, scheduling hasn't worked out. You know, it's, those guys uh, went 1-2, I believe. Was that in uh, 17 or 18 at Nationals? And so I was sending first place to uh, Finland in SCL and they were like literally a point apart. And they're like, man, is there any way I can go with my brother? So I call, talk to the guys at SCL and I say, I got brothers and they are freaky strong. Is there any way you can squeeze them both? And they said, send them both. So we sent them both out there and the, the SCL has been so impressed with them ever since they, they, you can come back to any show you want. And by the way, it just occurred to me with the Colorado connection, he's referring to Stan Carradine. Oh yeah, Stan is. Oh, I've I've seen Stan a couple times. That's Stan's one strong cat. Yeah, Stan's a beast. His he judges. Uh, I, I actually saw him on. We were talking about Garage Gym Life Media. They did a um, uh, a feature on Stan, and his his Garage Gym is awesome. Like he has uh, oh, yeah. car car deadlift in there, and like all kinds of stuff. It's unbelievable. The um, not unbelievable, but um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, it's it's great how much he's gotten out of a garage gym and shown how far you can go in the world uh, kind of training that way. Yeah, that garage is packed. Well, you heard about his accident when he fell, and he got hurt pretty bad. And so it was not even that long afterwards, there's a picture of him pressing like a 400-pound log, and he goes, yeah, it's kind of down right now. I'm like, wait a minute. You fell like off a ladder or something like that, and you're pressing 400 pounds the next day. Maybe I need to go fall off a ladder so I can press 400 pounds, right? <laughs> That's what I'm doing wrong. By the way, uh, John, John says he just shot uh, Stan a text with the link to this. So that'll be great. That'll be awesome. Yeah. He, <laughs> Thank he's you, a John. Thanks for the support, buddy. Yeah, he ju uh, judges a lot of our events out there in Colorado, and he's an awesome judge. He really helps the athletes out. Yeah, it's funny. I first learned about Stan Carradine in the uh, the Mammoth Strain Challenge back in January, where they had some of the pros there. He was there. Travis was there. Bobby Tom Bobby Thompson was otherworldly deadlifting there. But um, yeah, that's where I first saw Stan and like what he's all about and what he's capable of, which is quite a lot. Yeah, yes, he is. I've seen him compete in New York. I think he did New York Strongest uh, back one year. I can't remember which year it was, but yeah, he's he is unbelievable. Yeah, speaking of America's Strongest, Marcus was at that event too. Uh, he won twenty twenty America's Strongest. Yeah, I won. I won twenty oh four America's Strongest. Did you really? Awesome. That's awesome. It's like I got. I got to research you more, Willie. I'm going on the twenty year anniversary. I'm going to come back on the twentieth year, and I'll be sixty, and I'm taking on all those guys one more time. <laughs> That's a, hey, listen. If I were competing, I'm Masters age too, so I'm I'm right there with you. <laughs> I doubt if anybody from the time I won it would still be around, but uh, it'd be fun. I'd be the oldest guy out there, that's for sure. Yeah, somebody in the somebody in the audience here said when you were talking earlier about um, you know starting a while ago, he said I was born in 1986 or something. Be quiet, you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that happens all the time. Yeah. Yeah, but I was born in '75. By '86, I had seen like a bunch of Rocky movies already. 86 that's when i graduated from college <laughs> <Yeah>. that's funny <laughs> one in 04 i was in high school so i mean there's a little bit of a disparity there <laughs> wow no i graduated high school in 93 oh i got a good win for you when i won asm i was 40 then oh were you really wow 
and that's awesome. I was in my I was in my second year of chemotherapy too. Ah, uh, okay. So uh, r- full recovery now, I hope. Oh yeah, it's been eighteen years. Good, good. I yeah, think I we was should. 30... Uh... Go ahead. Sorry. No, I said we should talk one time. I have a uh, Kaposi sarcoma myself. It's a rare skin one. It's under control, but uh, there brothers and arms there. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm with you. ALL, ALL okay. survivor. Wow. Well, glad to see you're still with us. Really appreciate that. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So enough with the sad talk. Let's see what else we have in the uh, in the comments. Justin says, though, dang window wells get him. What is what does this mean? Anybody get what that is? I think that was a uh, reference to Stan, but <laughs> uh, oh, like something in his in his garage caused him injury, I guess. Huh. Well, anyway, world's strongest blacksmith, Tyler Haynes, another buddy of ours. This is the clearest I've ever heard it put when it comes to getting a pro card. Thank you, Tyler, for the for the uh, compliments. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you guys should check out Tyler if you haven't yet. World's strongest blacksmith on Instagram. He does some uh, some really cool stuff. Yeah, we might be friends on there. That sounds familiar. He's actually putting on a show really soon, so I should kind of connect you with him. You can uh, bounce ideas, maybe. Sure. Yeah, I was just going to say, he, he uh, just sent us a bunch of details about the show that he's getting together. So we'll try and uh, post those, uh, one of these live streams. And it uh, looks like he's putting a lot of work into it. It looks like it's going to be a fun show. The best promoters always do. Yeah, he's uh, he's awesome because he like fabricates a lot of his own stuff. He's doing deadlifts with tires instead of plates. You know, it's just uh, you need kind of use what's around you to get the job done, kind of thing. So that's why I really admire Tyler. Let's see. Justin says not everyone ages like Willie. He's like a fine wine, only gets better with age. Oh, thank God, my wife likes wine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, Stan fell in a window. Well, there you go. Thanks That's for the explanation, was. Justin. That was it. I knew he fell into something. I couldn't remember what it was. Poor window well. <laughs> Yo, kid. I guarantee it wasn't one piece after that. No way. Or, or maybe he fell and then there was a window well where he landed because he left a big enough dent. <laughs> oh, man. So, so John from Garage Gym Life Media is asking, have you had any ideas about when the first pro qualifier will be, or is that TBD? I think we're saying TBD, but maybe I'm wrong. My bet is Liz will have the first one. <laughs> I was actually about to say, I think now that we have announced it, you're going to see a lot of state reps um, either supporting their local promoters, because as Willie said, it has to be a state rep that's doing it. But in some rare cases, you know, we will approve a promoter you know, who is seasoned enough, who has enough of, you know, their act pretty much together um, to host something of this caliber, caliber, you're going to see that uh, announced pretty soon. So we're really excited to see who kind of steps up and wants to take on this new division um, that we're adding. Um, But I wanted to see if Willie also wanted to remind those in our audience about nationals and, you know, qualifiers for men's and women's worlds and how that that works because we do have those big shows coming up too oh yes uh pro women's worlds which will be uh held by mitch and lacey hughes in uh, wilson north dakota october 9th uh we just had our nationals if uh, any of the women who podium that's master we do it for masters too master women open women if you podium they can sign up right now. The entry is on Iron Podium. It's live. It's hot. They can sign up. An order of entry does matter. So if you sign up sooner, you get to go later. You get to watch everybody else in front of you, which can be important on a rep event, right? <laughs> I don't want to do any more than I have to. Um, our 82 and a half kilo men, uh, their worlds are in Syracuse, New York, September 25th, along with our 105 Master Worlds. Uh, so our 165 Podium Guys, our 181 Podium Guys, can sign up right now and anybody any and also with even with the pro wins worlds pull them from when we've had podium winners in the past worlds they're automatically invited so with us once you make the podium of the worlds you're automatically back. you don't even have to do nationals you can go straight to worlds uh and then uh, let's see what else oh for the first time ever we've got the 50 plus men's world championships in pittsburgh pennsylvania with big bond sigori uh that's gonna be fun uh, all the 50 guys were excited about it. even Chad Coy 
since he helped out at Nationals, he gets an invite to that. So he's excited. He's been trying to sign up for the last month. And I'm like, it's not even posted yet. You can't sign up. So is this the sort of thing we invite Nick Best to, to compete? Oh, Nick is, yep. Nick is in there. He's over, he's 52. He is in. But I know he's he's healing up right now from having his uh, lat reattached to his humerus. Uh, I so that, he yeah. be, I don't think he'll be ready by September, but he's hoping to be ready to compete in November. We'll see. He's Nick's a warrior. He did a live stream when he was still in the hospital bed, still groggy. It was unbelievable. Yeah, I think I think Callie kind of stuck it right in his face. And uh, and he's like, I'm not even awake yet. She's like, talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. So uh, let's see. Garage Gym Life Media says, uh, wait, sorry, this one. Perhaps the first one will be somewhere with a beach and, a, and gambling nearby. He's referencing Ooh. our show, Clash of Tridents in Atlantic City. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know, but I wanted you to say it. <laughs> well, you know, Maybe. and that's another that's another good point uh, Liz brought up. If there's a show that's currently on Iron Podium, that they want to add the pro class to it, they can. I have to approve it first, but they can. we can add that on to their show. Because we've probably got ish, 140 shows up on Iron Podium right now. Yeah. So if someone's interested in their current show, uh, or if they just want to wait and post their next show with it on there, they can. It's their choice. It's an optional thing. Promoters have that option. It's not required by anybody to do this, but if they do, there are requirements and how you do it. Right, as long as they meet the requirements. Yep. Absolutely. Liz, when's your uh, Clash of the Tridents? That is in October. It's actually the same day, unfortunately, as Pro Women's Worlds. Um, otherwise, I would be at Mitch's show assisting. We kind of coordinated that in a way that it you know, I was stuck, you know, with an expo, not really stuck. I mean, we're really excited to be with them, but I had to kind of tie myself to the Atlantic City Expo, uh, the fitness expo that's happening down there. So I had to have it that day, but we are excited to have um, CBS Sports Network coming out and actually, you know, streaming all of that for everyone. So, you know, I give my hats off to Mitch and the girls over at Pro Women's Worlds uh, the following year. I'll, I'll definitely be there. Yeah, that's for sure. Um the cool, you know, that they want to split the team up. Our team's going to get split in half between uh, October 9th, uh, between North North Dakota and New Jersey. But that's okay. That's why we have a team. Let's see. We have another another question from Jacob. What about the women that won okay, over or men? What about them getting a pro card? Because they definitely showed the top of the chain of both weights in their class. I didn't quite follow. Uh, oh, I he think said uh, overall. Yeah, overall, uh, like Jess Mitchell um, got the overall middleweight win at nationals. So I think he's referring to those specifically to the women who got the overall win for their group. Yeah, he's talking about the belt winners, right? I believe the belt winners, right? The belt winners. Yeah, now we we have we don't have any of the plans at this moment from this year for belt winners to automatically earn it, but they do get their spot and they got a thousand dollars to use towards. So if they want, if all the belt winners sign up tomorrow for Mitch and Lacey Hughes's pro women, the world's five, all they got to do is pay it. They send Tim Kovach the receipt. Tim reimburses them out of their thousand dollars each. So they've got money to spend. Simple as that. Simple as that. Awesome. Simple as that. I'll be there. That's great. And, and we actually give out prize money to the master women too. I don't think any other company gives out money to the master ladies. I don't either. That's awesome. That's great that you do that. Oh yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I'll tell Mitch to write that check out to Phoebe right now. <laughs> yes, exactly. for sure. We, uh, Isaac, do we know any good masters women? How about uh, Tana Ray Manthe? We should get her to go compete. That's that's the only one I can think of right now, but I'm sure we've probably had some others that are either there or close to it. So um, I'd, I'd have to look back through our, our list, though. So, uh, she, she, she would likely compete if Justin put something on in Colorado. Oh, no doubt. Yeah, the hard part, a lot of these master women, you don't even know they're master women. Sometimes I have to check IDs. Yeah, they look they're, too young. they're competing in the open. A lot of them were actually competing in the open at nationals. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Ken Johnson says, I tuned in too late. What was the announcement? <laughs> would you like to, would you care to summarize, Willie? Is that hey, all right? Ken, Ken, you're buying us all dinner tonight. That was the big announcement, okay? <laughs> now, we are adding a pro class, Ken. Pro class to USS. One men's class, one women's class. Details are on unitedstatesstrongman.com front page. And lots of opportunities to uh, become a part of that in each state uh, as, as the reps see fit. Oh, absolutely. You know, the one thing is, you know, you get to the big show, the big international show, uh, pro women's show, you know, it's, it's obviously tighter to win money, but if more promoters have these, you know, kind of regional pro divisions, you know, you may not be the best internationally, but you might be the best in your region and you can earn some money that way. It's kind of like when you go to that event, you might be the best deadlifter. You may not win the show, but you'll win the deadlift. It's kind of cool when a promoter gives out like a hundred dollar bonus for winning uh, an event. It's like, okay, I'm going to get a hundred bucks here. I may not win anything else, but I win a hundred bucks. They did that at the Mammoth Strain Challenge with a sandbag, but I just think the sandbag started off way too heavy. It was a 500-pound sandbag for the, uh, the pro men. And, oh, so they, uh, they, they held on to their money, huh? <laughs> on that one, they did, yeah. it was. Uh, and, and you had some heavy hitters like Trey Mitchell trying it, and it was just – I mean, that's it. We know Trey. Yeah, I know Trey. Yeah, Trey so tried it. Uh, who else? Isaac didn't um, – wasn't Wes Claiborne, was it? Who else tried it? Wes <laughs> I think it was West. It was West, right? Yeah, it was West. Yeah, um, and I don't because I think were there three total that attempted. And I don't think any of them. I think Trey was the, the one who came the closest, um, but none of them were able to actually. Load yeah, it. West lapped it, but uh, yeah, I couldn't quite get it up on the yeah on the pedestal. West West did our Tennessee strongest man. Uh, I think it was December twelfth this year, uh, and he almost pulled a thousand one deadlift. Wow. Ah, Unbelievable. Strong kid. Yeah, for in, in many ways, with his viper pressing and whatnot. Yeah, he's oh, strong yeah. in many ways. <laughs> yes, he is. You know, it's funny too. I forgot to mention at Nationals this year, Tim and Sue held drawings between every event. They were giving like a couple hundred bucks, hundred dollar bills, just hand them out. I think your name get called, and the competitor would be like, "What?" And they'd walk up, got hit a hundred dollar bill. So just because they're there. Nice. It's like Oprah just giving away stuff to people. No kidding. I want a car, though. Give me a car. <laughs> you get a hundred bucks. You get a hundred bucks. You know, it'd be fun if we get to the point we grow enough and we could give away a car to the overall male, the overall female winners at yes. the Pro International. Now, that would be pretty cool. That would be cool. Yeah. Cause I mean, like I mentioned, I'm in Northern New Jersey. So I've gone to the U S open tennis uh, quite a few times and they, they have a Mercedes they give away every time to the men. And oh. Why didn't we start playing tennis? You know, come on. There you go. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. Is Stan Carradine here? There's the man. Stan, what's up, Stan? Stan, we were talking about the story about when you fell, and then you came back like a short time later and only put up a 400-pound log. So Stan says, so when am I competing? Time and place. Hey, it sounds like Justin might be the one helping Stan out there, I think. Sounds like it. By the way, Stan, man, John from uh, Garage Gym Life Media has some pull. He uh, reaches out to you, and here you are. Look at that. I got some friends with powerful people. <laughs> the only problem is if Stan competes in just the show, who's going to judge? <laughs> yeah. I, I can if you need. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I'll step in. <laughs> We're going to have to bring you in, buddy. Yeah, get Anthony to judge. There you go. He'll do it. Yeah. Who uh, I, I wanted to ask you too, because who's the uh, chair for Washington State? Because like I'm out here, kind of over by Spokane, and we don't have sure. anything with Superman related. It's lame. Like there's nothing going on out here. <laughs> so uh, Mike Cromer, Mike Cromer actually just won a Pro Master World uh, Nationals this year. But Mike is the guy. I think Mike's in Kinswick. Does that sound right? Or maybe somewhere. I'm, I might be completely wrong. I'll have to look it up. I'm not sure. Yeah, Mike yeah. Cromer, Lisa Cromer. Lisa's a two-time uh, champion with us. That's All what right. Mike said. I got a belt this weekend, but Lisa still got two, so he's got to do another one to catch up. <laughs> nice. It's funny. Uh, there's some talk in the comments about Brian Shaw. Justin says that Shaw is considered one of the 14,000-foot peaks in that area. I would believe that. 
Hey, I was at the show when Brian earned his pro status with me back. I think it was like 2007 in Utah. Oh wow! He, he weighed 297, and he could he pulled 700, but it was everything he had. If it had been 701, he wouldn't have got it. So he, he weighed what Novikov weighs now. <laughs> yeah, and I was at the Arnold when he pulled the 1021. So it was quite the jump. Absolutely. Yep. That difference between those two weights is about what I deadlift, the three plates. <laughs> yeah, he gained about 120 pounds and then added about 300 pounds to the deadlift. So pretty good. Yeah. Awesome. Let's see. Uh, hey, Isaac, Justin owes you some smoked brisket. I don't know why, but he says so. <laughs> I am definitely down. I will do a drive for smoked brisket. It's uh, well, actually, because my wife's family all lives out towards uh, Denver. So um, next time we're in the area, I'll have to hit them up. Is, is Spokane west or southwest? Uh, no, so it's east. Um, it's like middle east of Washington State. We're 45 minutes from Coeur d'Alene, if you know where that is. Oh, wow. Yeah, see, this is yeah. why I have state reps, because I don't know your state as well. <laughs> no, no, we don't go west of the mountains very much. It's uh, it's too rainy over there. Uh, I like I like it drier over here. <laughs> there you go. I, uh, Idaho has some really good shows, and I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Miranda Kopp doesn't uh, have a pro class in one of her shows coming up there at Berserker. Yeah, and I actually just did um, – I, I was a spotter loader at another show, and Obi ended up showing up. So that was kind of cool getting to meet him for the first time. I was like, yeah, oh, hey, another guy who makes me look smaller, you know. Yeah, so. well, yeah Obi helps out. That's where he trains, I believe. He trains out there at Jay Hagedorn's place. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he, he, uh, yeah, it's actually pretty cool because he came up and um, he's actually been talking about – uh, heading up more frequently and training at the gym that I go to on the weekends. So I was like, Oh, maybe I can uh, run into him and get some pointers or something like that. Cause I'm six, five and about 300 pounds. Um, so I've got a long ways to go. I got to tell you, Isaac, Obi was hey, out angling you with his head. His head is massive in real life. I will say that. Okay. The dude's head is very large. Yeah, my, my way, wife calls me big head all the time, and then she bet OB. <laughs> By the way, there's a whole arrangement going on in the comments. So Stan's asking, when am I competing time and place? Justin's arranging it for him. So we got Tournament of Titans 2, Stan. I'll find a new judge. You're competing. Stan says, game on. Allie's in that category. So there's two, and I'm sure there will be a few more to make six. So it seems like we're really making great progress already. and. Uh, with a name like Stan Carradine, I'm sure you'll you'll attract plenty of more people there, Stan. That's going to be awesome. It will be awesome. So there, there's there's a west side of the country. Now we got the east side. I should go with it. Go with this way. East side, <laughs> east side. Uh, get some shows going. Some Midwest, maybe some Southwest. I bet we have a few in Texas coming up. Just wait and see. Well, all I got to say is uh, Isaac's hooked up with brisket. It looks like Jacob's going to hook me up in Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime. Thank you both. <laughs> Take a drive. Yeah, sorry. Virginia's a little bit far to drive when you've got two <laughs> kids, two and under. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I'll do Colorado first. <laughs> Yeah, so Stan says, well, time to get back to training for a comp. Cool. Nice. Um, oh, this is an interesting, uh, it's a World's Strongest Man question, but World's Strongest sure. Blacksmith is asking, what do all of you think of the vegan catering they've announced for Worlds? That was an interesting post when I saw that. Yeah. I don't think any of the athletes are vegan, so I'm not sure... <laughs> um, if much of the food will be eaten, <laughs> but we'll see, I guess. Yeah, it's definitely interesting eat. marketing and not really for this demographic, but I guess we'll see, you know, what happens. I am enjoying the memes for, for a time though. It's, it's giving us a new wave of memes at this point. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. No, I mean, I would have expected like certified Piemonte's beef or something like that, but this is the opposite. Ken Johnson says, Midwest, let's go. 
Oh, Ken Johnson, our Iowa guy. That's our Iowa rep in Dubuque. Oh, okay. Welcome, Ken. Ken, Ken uh, posted a show, and three hours later, it was sold out. Whoa. I'll be at his show July 31st. I think it's uh, we have a record going on there. Right. Opportunity for someone to break a record. In which event is that? You know, I couldn't tell you right now. I've got so many shows I'm going to. I know when you know, I'm going in for a record. I just know it's a record. I'm not 100% sure. Ken might post that. Whatever it is. It might be the 18 day left. I'm not sure. Nice. That's cool. By the I way, we uh, yeah, we, we talked briefly about Worlds. Do any of you have predictions for World's Strongest Man that might interest the audience? Well, as long as it's an American, I'm okay. There you go. I picked a Canadian to win, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, JF's taking it. I was it watching your video. Yeah, What's that? John, I was, I was watching your video, and uh, and uh, some of the comments are getting a little opinionated. I don't think people like your picks. <laughs> wait, wait, no, I'm, I'm getting roasted? Not roasted, but people are uh, a little bit uh, – they don't agree with you. We'll just put it that way. <laughs> I didn't expect them to. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sure I – sure for those of you who haven't watched, I didn't pick Brian to make it out of the to make it into the finals. So um, Ooh, I, I, I was <laughs> yeah, I, I know I probably missed something in prep, and I've uh, kindly asked my audience to just show me where I went wrong, and hopefully they politely do so. Well, that's there's a lot of people where you went wrong. There's a lot of people politely telling me so. <laughs> yeah, it would be hard to go against Brian not getting out of there. Yeah. Oh, the uh, Ken's, Ken's record is a Max Axel. Nice. Okay. And when is that coming up again? That is July 31st. I, I don't know how much you guys have seen the Iron Podium, uh, but that is it's an amazing uh, website. Uh, Craig and Lindsay run the whole thing, and it's made things so much easier for everybody. At, you know, so everybody kind of knows where to look now. Once you've been with it, every time you look up an entry, you're like, oh, okay, so I know how to go here, here, and here. And it makes it super easy. It kind of guides you through it. Uh, it's fantastic yeah, I've, for promoters. I've used it before because uh, John from Garage Gym Life Media and I uh, work Central Georgia Strongest Man together, and the results were on Iron Podium. It, it is a very good tool. Oh, you, so you were with Greg and Nicole on that, huh? Yes. Yeah. They're yep. awesome. Aren't they a great couple? They're awesome. Yeah, they were awesome. A great show, too. Fantastic show. And extremely well run. It, it went for as much as was going on. It went quickly and really efficiently. Yeah, they, I can see Greg and Nicole possibly having a pro uh, pro division down there. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But yeah, that was a great show. Another good thing about Iron Podium that we're really enjoying promoters is the spectator tickets. So that's kind of like a brand new feature that's come out. So it's kind of like an all in one stop shop for promoters and for athletes. You don't have to worry about when are they going to put this link, you know, for this opportunity, you know, where's the weight matrix, everything's all right there. So um, the Kilgos really have knocked it out of the park with that. And we're excited as state reps and promoters that, you know, Willie has partnered with them. So definitely check out ironpodium.com. Yeah. The yeah, last story so was just fantastic. I mean, it just made it so much easier for, for me as I'm on the floor to kind of keep track of my athletes so I knew exactly where they were and how to coach them for the next event and that type of thing. Um, I mean, that's something that wasn't available to us before. And then, you know, before we had to kind of create our own spreadsheets or use the one that was on, uh, what was it, Google Docs or something like that. Um, and it got kind of, it was a little bit difficult sometimes to, to change it up and, and the reordering. If you aren't familiar with that kind of thing, they really do handle all of it and they they even uh, like for us you know they all they're, they're in richmond which is only like maybe an hour and a half away from us they've always offered to come and actually score at our shows which is a huge benefit you know for us locally but um having them right there at nationals running it was was just fantastic it yeah was live story. oh sorry good no, I was just going to ask. I was always wondering, how does the data get into Iron Podium? Like, is somebody doing manual entry in a, on a laptop or something? Or Go Yeah, ahead, they pretty much, you have like a way uh, back door as a promoter to be able to sign in and input all of that. 
and Iron Podium's great because they always have someone scheduled on the weekend to help. So one of our last shows in Jersey, um, there was like a count backs issue, um, you know, where it wasn't formatting correctly and there was a glitch. Um, it was on our end, which, you know, we, you know, they kind of walked us through on how to fix that because, you know, the formatting is a little new for all of us. But yeah, it's kind of like a backdoor entryway of doing it. Um, and then, you know, they double check it on their end and it sorts everything perfectly. It's just, it's kind of idiot proof, <laughs> to be honest. That's awesome. And uh, Willie, I cut you off. Sorry, go ahead. That's okay. The live scoring is, you know, that is what is the best part. So event one gets over, everything's loaded, it's published. You can get on your cell phone and look and see where you're at, how you did. Uh, if you're coaching somebody in a show, let's say in Florida, but you, you don't want to make the trip down there with them. Now you could follow your athlete, call each other on the phone, say, hey, it looks like you did pretty good at that first event. You know, how you feeling for the next event? So it, it really opens up the communication no matter where you're at to watch what's going on. Families can watch the scoring. Uh, and if there's a mistake, which we, I think we only had like three uh, this weekend, but right away an athlete said, Hey, I got eight reps on that. They only gave me seven. So it was, it was a scribers error with no big deal. We, they showed us the video. We saw it, we fixed it. So when the day was over, no mistakes. That's awesome. It's, it's funny how that scene from a judge's perspective versus a fan. So, you know, as a fan clash on the coast, for example, I watched Anthony San Lorenzo as a fan. So like, you know, he was doing the overhead medley and I happened to know that the part of that medley that's the best for him is the circus. And he he didn't get the Mauser um, up. Like, they didn't count his rep. And it should have counted. Like, I watched it. I'm like, he got it up. It should have counted. And so I'm, like, messaging him right away after. I said, they, they robbed you. That should have counted. And he said, you know, I challenged it. They did count it. I said, yeah, they counted it. But they didn't let you get to your best part of that medley. He's like, yeah, I agree. <laughs> but uh, it's funny. Like, as a fan, you really um, – you know, you, you kind of see things through your own glasses, so to speak. Yeah. Live streaming is great. Uh, Don and Nancy Sousa, they did the live streaming for us from ADL. Oh, they're unbelievable. So they're available to anybody. Uh, people want some live streaming done, they'll come out and do it. The guy's got like $80,000 worth of cameras and equipment that he brings with him when he does it. And he does a super job. That's awesome. Wow. And uh, not not to toot my own horn, but uh, Garage Gym Life Media says, everybody buy my box strongest man a coffee for breaking this news. So I'm on buy me a coffee. That's what he's referring to. And I usually put the links in my description. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. Uh, he also says Greg and Nicole are the best. So he agrees with the sentiments of everybody in the virtual room here. Ah, Kent Altina's here. I love Kent. Oh, I know Kent. Yes. Kent and Laura. Uh, now all we need with Iron Podium is the ability to search past results for athletes, but I agree it's a great addition. Well, I, I believe when you've competed in a show, that's that's safe. So when you log in, you can see what you've done in the past. Every show in Iron Podium you've ever done is there for your view. I don't know if it's viewed for everybody else, but now when you go to results, there is a results page we have on unitedstatesstrongman.com and you can go look up the results. Just I was just looking at the uh, national result today. Um, I went to event results, clicked on that because I wanted to get a hold of some people about some invites for uh, the 90 kilo worlds, the 105 worlds over in Finland. And then we've got a uh, one of our super heavyweight guys who got the invite to Finland's Strongest Man. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. When is Finland's Strongest Man? I, it's either, that's You know, it's funny. I look at the calendar for SEL. I've seen July 24th and July 31st. And I keep trying to find out which one is it. So I haven't heard back yet, but it's one of those weekends. The uh, 90 kilo and 105 worlds are September 11th and 12th. Day one qualifying events, uh, top 12 go to day two. Yeah, because I'm just thinking of that part of the world. Sweden's already happened because Johnny Hansen won it. So that's why I was wondering where, when Finland would be. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, let's see. Uh, world's strongest blacksmith. Let's see. I like Central Georgia's Strongest Man. It went smoothly for me, except I was thrown off on the keg press and the stone due to its size. All right. Sure. The tags and iron. The tags and iron podium work so well together. What are what are the tags that Jacob's referring to? Oh, he's referring to the the um, athlete tags. So as they completed an event. The, um, the scribe would write exactly what they did 
during that event. So he's he's referring to uh, how smooth the show ran using the tags to help with the scoring. And then that was turned into Iron Podium. And that's how they were able to update so quickly. Got it. Okay. So it just helps to identify when you have so many folks running around. I got it. Yeah. yeah they all have lanyards on and scores get written on their lanyard and on the scribes. So that way we've got, we got a double way to check it. And we got to give props out to our board member, Steve Barkley for coming up with that back in 2017 nationals in Detroit, Michigan. Props, Steve, Steve started Barkley. that. And it's kind of stuck with us ever since. Yeah. It seems like a great idea. Let's see. So Kent also says Iron Podium definitely prevents the Google Sheets hell that we had to deal with in past competitions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. And then Ken Johnson says it does have archives. Yep. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Well, can we use the archives to ch double check when people qualify for nationals too? Mm -hmm. So. And Iron Podium is actually working on another feature for us to give out automatic invites. So when someone makes a qualifying at, at a regional show, they'll automatically get an email saying, you know, you've qualified for 2022 nationals in uh, Manchester, New Hampshire. Oh, that's awesome. Kind of uh, automate, automate part of the process. We, we've given them so many things that we want to add. They're like, they got a list and that's one's coming up on the list. I was going to say they've been inundated with all the oh, features that we want added. Um, we're, we're forever apologizing to the Kilgos for, you know, all of our crazy ideas. But I mean, you've got enough state reps under USS that have been doing this for, you know, quite some time. There's many veterans out there and they've been kind of dealing with a lot of the hiccups that can happen as a promoter. So, you know, the Kilgos have just adapted and given us so many different, you know, updates. It's great. So there is something like as an athlete or a promoter, if you guys are listening out there and you, you know, want recommendations, the two of them are really great. You know, they'll, they'll listen and you may see some new adaptations coming out soon. Yeah. Year two will be even better. <laughs> For sure. So uh, we've been talking about some potential shows from Justin, from Liz, Phoebe, do you have any uh, shows on the horizon that you're putting together? Um, this October we're doing the, um, Static Monsters USS 2022 qualifier in Virginia, actually again at uh, Brute Strength Gym in Norfolk, Virginia. Um, and that is actually, as of today, it's a three event contest with the max uh, log and the max 18 inch axle deadlift. And then um, for fun, a ladder of natural stone and atlas stone where the atlas stone is lifted to the shoulder and the natural stone is a clean and press. Um, and so we like to throw some interesting things in there. <laughs> so that's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, the next uh, USS show that we are planning would prob probably be right now, we're thinking uh, a summertime show next year. So either July or August. Um, and then if we can squeeze another one in there earlier, we will, <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, that's what we're looking at uh, for 2022. Awesome. And then, so that, uh, static monsters qualifier, is that novice and open? So, um, we're not going to offer a novice class for this particular contest. We, we almost always do. But this one, because it is a double qualifier for it's a USS and then it's a Static Monsters Worldwide thing too. Um, so we, we kind of don't want to go into where we're doing 15 classes. <laughs> so so uh, this one in particular will just be open, you know, and then with the Static Monsters um, and their their classes as well. Yeah, I mean, I hear... Uh, yeah, go ahead. To Chad Croft as well. He's, you know, the head of doing static monsters. We're also doing it in Jersey in October. So if you take a look on iron podium, we'll see a lot of static monsters that'll be coming out pretty soon. You can't have any that are too close to one another. So one of the big caveats of static monsters is the shows have to be at least four hours apart. So me and Phoebe are actually like very, very close to that four hour mark. Um, so there's also one in New York. Um, yeah. I believe Chris Vaccio is also doing one out in Ohio. So you know, we're pretty much like the upper East coast of all the static monsters that are coming out. And a lot of us like to pair it with a third or fourth event. 
just so that we can also qualify them for USS Nationals. Because if you're paying to compete and you're paying to do two max events, I mean, you, you should earn it by just adding on a third, you know, event and having a little bit more fun and getting a double qualifier, like Phoebe said. So, uh, you know, shout out to Chad Croft. He's the one that's uh, head of all that. And these are all on the same same weekend. That's awesome. So, yes. Is, is that something a pro would compete in or no? Uh, sure. Phoebe, specifically yours. I mean, yeah, it's open to all all competitors. Because I hear overhead stone press and I think Steve Schmidt. <laughs> oh my god no kidding <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah it's open to all competitors pro regardless of you know federation that type of thing but um as far as being a uss qualifier it's for 2022 nationals um and so that's why we put that third event in there so that they actually do get you know the they do have to do something more than just two static events yeah that makes sense yeah i think we have right now uh three stack monsters uh, that are being co-promoted with USS and stack monsters. We got uh, Liz's show. We've got uh, Phoebe show. And then we got uh, Ricky show in Texas. Yes. And I want to compete one of them. Now I have to decide which one to go to. Nice. <laughs> yeah, we got it. Who's the rep in, um, in Indiana for USS? There's a lot of great athletes there. Uh, John Connor is our uh, state rep up there. Okay. In, uh, gosh, where is he at? Man, I used to, I can't think of the name of the town he's in. But, uh, yeah, he does stuff for us in Indiana. Yeah, because like uh, Christine Matthews, who just competed at Nationals, uh, USS Nationals, she's a good buddy of ours. I'd love to see her uh, get a bunch of these opportunities that are opening up with this with this new announcement. And she's in Indiana. So He's, Isaac, uh, uh, Kendallville, Indiana. So, okay. uh, you know, maybe we can coax him into putting one on. It just ha can't be four hours close to the next one. So, right. <laughs> nice. So Isaac, you want to jump in with anything I've missed? Uh, no, uh, I think you have it mostly covered. I know, you know, it's on, it's on your channel this time. So I'm letting you run it. Um, I've had to step out a couple times cause the kids were crying, but, um, <laughs> I just saw world's strongest blacksmith on a side note saying that he just saw something about someone trying to press the Husevel stone, the actual Husevel stone. Um, maybe we could get that in a contest sometime. That would be impressive. <laughs> So Steve Schmidt's gotten that kind of weight over bar. I don't know how far he is from from uh, pressing it. Well, because the the Mauser that they pressed wasn't too far off, right? It was 370, 380, something like that is the record now. Oh, that's and, right. He's a record holder there too. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. and the Husafel is 414, I think, pounds, something like that. Yeah, I think it's four seventeen. Yeah. So uh, maybe we could get a uh, get some prize money out for someone to press the Husafel stone. I believe uh, Steve does uh, Chris Baccio's Stang Monsters that he holds in Ohio each year. Yeah, we'll get Steve. We'll get uh, Athor Melstead. All the great stone pressers to go for it. That'd be a fun comp. I would want to go to. I would want to go and watch that in person, though. I don't, I wouldn't want to be watching it on a live stream. Congrats to Aether, by the way. Just one strongest man in Iceland, and he's heading to Worlds uh, in a week and a half. So, congrats to him. Aether's looking. He's looking strong too. He's uh. He's made some good progress lately. Yeah, I mean, he had the misfortune of competing uh, toward the tail end of Half Thor's career, so it was difficult to win that Iceland title. But now it's now it's all his. Now that Thor is off boxing, no, he's no longer doing strongman. That's right. That's right. <laughs> any, any, the money any, is. Yeah, any picks there from any of you? Uh, Thor versus Eddie? I think they'll both run out of gas in round two. <laughs> Interesting. Eddie, Eddie's, Eddie's kind of Eddie's kind of gas is called anger, though. Does that run out in two rounds? I don't know. <laughs> I'm telling you, my wife does boxing, and she's like, "Man, 
by, by you like to get your two rounds, your arms feel like they weigh a million pounds as big as those guys are. Oh, they're going to be hurting. Oh yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you. So I tried it once when I turned 40, I, I uh, told my wife, I want to go to Gleason's gym in Brooklyn. Cause it's, you know, the oldest boxing gym in the country. And I want to try it out. So I called them up and I said, made an appointment with the trainer and uh, it was really cheap, by the way. Like, I was shocked. I thought they would really, like, try to capitalize on the name, but it was, like, 15 bucks an hour or something. So I get there, and uh, I sign all the waivers, and they said, look to your right, so this is your trainer. And I thought it was going to be some house trainer. It was Johan Guzman, two-time world champion. And so uh, they said, yeah, so this is so. And so I said, yes, I've seen him on HBO 10 times. I know who this is. And so, uh, you know, I the first like 10 minutes was just, uh, you know, foot placement, like step one, step two, step three, step four. And it didn't take long to be gassed and I'm not 400 pounds. I mean, I can, uh, <laughs> I can really imagine what those guys are going to go through. I think the one thing saving both of them is they've both lost a ton of weight. So comparatively they will feel, you know, light on their feet for five minutes or so. <laughs> but we'll, uh, <laughs> We'll see how long that lasts. Yeah, they, did, they better have one minute rounds. That's not their only chance. Yeah, right. I mean, I did judo and Muay Thai growing up, and like, you know, I was I was a buck fifty at the time, and you still get gassed. And and being three hundred pounds now, trying to do, you know, I, I've I've tried to do a little bit of sparring and stuff with people now, and I'm like, man, I get you know two minutes in, and I'm like, all right, I I need a breather. <laughs> I don't do this endurance stuff anymore. <laughs> We all, remember when Marius, we all remember when Marius went to Ultimate Fighting. Remember how he came out? He was he was like halfway through the second round, he was done. For 30 seconds, he was unbeatable. But if you stay right. out of the range for 30 seconds, you could probably take him down. <laughs> I, I can run pretty fast. I think I can get around that ring pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Marius, does five titles make him the greatest of all time? What are your opinions? I would say no. And I'll tell you why. Zadrudos Zavikas. <laughs> Big Z, arguably, is probably the strongest guy. But I'll tell you what, if Shaw pulls out number five, he's got an argument on his hands. So I'm going to say this right now. Big Z is number one. Despite what's going on with my video right now, Brian Shaw is ahead of Marius right now, in my opinion. He doesn't have to win five. I agree. I agree. Um, Did you see the uh, world's strongest blacksmith's comment? He just says, "Is butter bean versus butter bean? <laughs> <laughs> butter bean versus butter beaner? <laughs> butter bean was amazing. Don't diss on butter bean, okay? Oh, thank you. He, was, he, was a guy, but... he actually had amazing endurance for a guy that size. Yeah, but really I actually, did. I like this comment better from Garage Gym Life Media. So uh, he and Justin were going back and forth. They'll basically be holding each other up. It'll <laughs> so sound like a Lamaze class. Um, no, wait, check this one out. So I misread this. They'll be exhausted and hugging by the middle of round one. I thought it said they'll be exhausted and hungry by the middle of round one. <laughs> well, I think both apply. Both apply there. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the clinch is going to be their number one defense, I believe. <laughs> That's funny. I, I think Eddie's only uh, fault is that he's – well, I mean, but we haven't really seen him in a fight yet, so he hasn't done an exhibition or anything like that. But he's excessively aggressive. And so I think with the way Thor usually fights on his back foot, if Eddie's always running into that, that could go to Thor's advantage. So I think that's the one thing where it's going to be a little bit more of a toss-up. But Well, uh, I have to give you the opposing opinion. Jessica says she thinks Eddie's crazy enough to win. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and and I'm I'm rooting Eddie too. I think oh, I don't yeah. think Thor has it, even with the reach and everything else. I think, yeah, I think Eddie's gonna take it, but we'll see. I don't see either one of them moving. I just see a slugfest till they're out of gas or somebody gets knocked out. Well, you know, the other risk too is they're both extremely powerful hitters, and so like if they're making contact, um they can do some serious damage to each other too. So that's the other, that's the other factor you have to think about as well. I got to tell you, I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting to like Jacob more and more as we go through this Eddie all day. <laughs> yeah. He's team Eddie for sure. 
I just don't want to see them with their heads down coming in like this. Yeah. <laughs> I broke up enough of those fights in middle school when I was teaching. Yeah. I don't want to see that. Out of those I was gonna say that. Hopefully, they both had enough coaching by the time the actual fight comes in that they'll look semi like boxers <laughs> at least. Jacob says he thinks Eddie can take a punch better. I agree with that. I mean, to to Thor's credit, though, like he's improved a lot since he first. He was, sorry to say, terrible when he first started. At least he's you know trying to get the mechanics down and uh, and really working hard at it. It's just to me like Eddie has been offended like in the deepest way you can offend a guy in this type of career, and Thor is doing it just as let me learn a new skill. It's it's two different. One guy's angry and one guy's just trying to master something new. It's, it's two different things. You can't fight with emotions, though. That's one thing. You got to stay calm. True, unless you're Mike Tyson. <laughs> he's, uh, he's trying to eat children and whatnot, at least back then. So what do you say, Isaac? Should we wrap it up? I think we're uh, maybe deviating a bit in our comments. And uh... yeah, we should probably start wrapping it up. I can. I can. Sounds like the kids are kind of being a handful for my wife, so she might want to. Uh oh. Have a, a two and a half year old and an eleven month old, and it's bedtime, Ooh. and it sounds like neither of them are really wanting to go to bed at the moment. So I have the door locked, so they can't come in at least. But ah. I should probably go out there and help her out. It's mean to leave her alone. <laughs> Yeah, so why don't we uh, why don't we give our esteemed guests the final words, Phoebe? What, what's the last thing you'd like to say to our audience this evening? Oh, just just thanks for having us on. Um, thanks for you know everyone who tuned in tonight. I mean, and uh, yeah, nationals was fantastic. I look forward to meeting many many more of our athletes. Um, yeah, you know, USS is doing doing some good things, and um, I'm just really glad to be a part of it. You know, and and I'm really honored that you guys, you know. We didn't speak much about the the women's advisory board, but you know, me and Liz were were voted in um, earlier this year, or was it this year? Um, this year, yeah, it started. Exactly with, <laughs> yeah, we had open nominations in January, and then we right. let people for like six months. And right. these are your top two vote getters right here. Yeah, I mean, it, it's truly just an honor to be a part of it, and that you guys, you know, ladies, because <laughs> I'm sure it was more ladies than anything else, but that you ladies, right. um, you know. Uh, put us in this position because it is it is the athletes the, the athletes are the reason that we're here so uh, thanks and, and thanks for have, having me on yeah and apologies for not speaking about that more let's do that for a few minutes now because it, it is important so <laughs> what is the role of the women's advisory board and you can both you can both speak to that well so, I mean, okay. we're, we're listening we're listening um we're doing something you know for the women where uh a lot of times, you know, they'll they'll come to us, and you know, they'll express their concerns and that type of thing. Um, especially, uh, you know, with like uh, pro women's worlds and and so forth. Um, and so, and we bring those those concerns to Willie, and then of course, you know, we're advocates for USS and we're advocates for the women on both sides. So, you know, we're we're really really honored to be in the position to do that. You know, um, Willie's done a great job of of empowering us in that position. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's still something that's newer. A lot of people, you know, don't really understand what it is that we do. Um, but we're advocates more than anything else, both ways. Uh, go ahead, Liz. I thought you were t saying something. Yeah, no, I mean, I think you said it perfectly. Advocates is one of the best words to use, you know, for the, this new um, set of positions. Willie has always had some amazing, you know, board members with Steve Barkley and John Albrecht, I mean, you know, the three of them have been just so great in kind of building USS from the beginning. And Willie saw a need for, you know, two females to come in and kind of field some of the opinions of females and maybe some males that would just feel more comfortable, you know, talking with us, giving another set of ears um, to some of the problems that they see in the sport of, of strong women. In particular, um, I mean, I know you guys early on in the interview were talking about how, you know, there's not many opportunities and things are improving, but there's always room for improvement. And I think Willie has really embraced that. The board has really embraced that um, trend and wanting to be more open um, and accountable to to women. And, you know, already Phoebe and I have, you know, spoken to a lot of females, a lot of males 
about some improvements that they want. And we've been able to bring about some really decent change. I think this new pro class is one of those things that was kind of mulling around in Willie's head, you know, and the other board members heads and then bringing on Phoebe and I, you know, we just really shed some light on some of the, you know, problems that are in strong women. And, you know, we're just here as advocates, like Phoebe said, if there's ever any questions that you feel aren't being answered by your state reps or even for our state reps, if they have questions about weights, because women's weights, I mean, we've seen it. Sometimes we're babied. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I've done some shows where it's a 32 deadlift, like 32 reps of a deadlift. I've literally done in an open class. And it's, that's just unheard of because unfortunately that promoter didn't understand women's weights or didn't test them. So we're challenge, challenging, you know, other promoters and our state reps to, to look at those weights and really challenge us. I mean, we're strong. We can, we can really push some weight. So, you know, we're here as another set of ears to bounce some of these weights off, which some of the men and women have done. Thankfully, you know, we've improved a lot of the shows um, in my area, as well as Phoebe's area across the, you know, across the country even. So we really just want to push the envelope, challenge the norm, you know, improve on things. So I thank everyone for allowing us to do that. We're really excited. Yeah, that's a that's a great summary from both of you. Any uh, kind of new initiatives that you want to share yet or like anything that's in the works? Go ahead, Stevie. Um, I mean, other than the, what we uh, discussed about the the pro uh, status opportunities, um, um, really just um, like Liz was saying, uh, the communication has to improve and it has improved. Um, and uh, as far as like um, what we have coming up for 2022 um, for the promoters, I mean, we really encourage them to reach out to us um, so that we can make these shows the best they can be for the strong women um, without neglecting, you know, we don't want it to be too light. We don't want it to be too heavy. We, we don't want people going out to shows and zeroing events, you know, unnecessarily, but at the same time, like we want to make it challenging. There, there's a definite, there's a definite range where we need to be. And I think there's a learning curve um, across the board. Um, yeah, I, I think um, we have some good things coming up with the, the new pro class and, and um, yeah, use us, you know, reach out. Does that become like a standard set of guidelines? So if a promoter comes to you and says, here are my classes, like what, what do you advise? And you would say, you know, for these women's weight classes and for these men's weight classes, you should be around this range. Like, is, is there kind of a, a goal of a standard set of guidelines? I think the best rule of thumb that we, Phoebe and I have been giving everyone is test your weights. Don't just assume that because, you know, the women in your gym are all indicative of a certain weight class or what have you, test your weights. Um, a lot of, you know, new promoters have a lot of novice females because we are bringing in so many more people. Just because you have a novice heavyweight woman and a novice lightweight woman doesn't mean they're indicative of lightweight and heavyweight. You can't just assume that. So we encourage people to test, especially in your area, because Texas is way different than Jersey when it comes to local competitors. Um, and then we'll give them, like you said, a set of guidelines. Like this is what, you know, we have used in the past. This is a really good, you know, height for this throw for females, or this is a really good range, but also test. Um, I don't ever want anyone to just go on Iron Podium and like search for another show and, oh, I'll just do that weight because that's what that promoter did. That may not have worked for them. Go back and look at their show, you know, a week later and see, did they have a rep fest or did everyone zero? I mean, that's a promoter that didn't test. So, you know, we really, Phoebe and I have been pushing people to test those weights just because we give you a range doesn't mean that it's perfect for your area. Well said. And uh, Willie, I'll give you the last word for the evening. I'm not used to that. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I like what both the ladies said. And we have a rule kind of that we use and we recommend it to people. We call it a rule of thirds. If a third of your people are around double figures, a third of your people are around middle single figures and a third of your people are around zero to one or two. It's a pretty good event. That, that's a great way to measure it. And I, I would, would listen about people looking at uh, past results. I know a lot of the male promoters in the past and like, I don't know what to do for the women's weight. So they look at old results. Well, that doesn't mean it's going to work for you. And that's one another benefit we have of having Phoebe and Liz is I can send and I do it all the time. I'll send somebody straight to them. 
ask them about women's weights or lightweight, middleweight, heavyweight, super heavyweight, because they have a much better idea of it than I do. Um, and, and so it, it's a huge help. And then the other point, both of them made, a lot of ladies are more comfortable coming to them to ask them a question. I think I'm pretty approachable for the most part, but not everybody knows me that well yet, but they do know Phoebe and they do know Liz. So they'll go to them first, which I highly recommend. Awesome. Uh, oh, actually, one last question in the comments. What's the preferred platform to communicate with the two of you, Phoebe and Liz, if, if folks want to talk about this topic? Is it Instagram, some other mechanism? So all of the state reps are actually listed on unitedstatesstrongman.com. So if you have questions for your specific state rep, we encourage you to go to your state rep first. And if you don't feel that your question has been answered and or if it's a specific like women's advisory board question, our info is right on there. Um, I think I have email and phone. Phoebe probably has the same, um, but we're very vocal on social media as well. Both of us have Instagrams, which I think have been tagged in, in all the postings about this too. Um, so it's, it's, yep. it's easy to get us. Hey, Lauren. Ah, uh, we know Lauren. <laughs> I know Lauren. Yeah. She gave me a ride and my wife and I ride one time from a contest back to our hotel. <laughs> awesome. Great question, Lauren. All right. Well, I just wanted to take a moment to thank all of you for joining. This has been an awesome session. We had great participation from the audience. Thanks for breaking the news here, Willie. This is uh, we really, really appreciate that. And just reminding the audience Follow all of our guests uh, on Instagram um, and, and you know, subscribe to us too, right? While we're at it. Uh, Isaac's at Hunger Smash Fitness. I'm my blog's strongest man. Like, subscribe, follow all of our stuff. Um, you three want to shout out your Instagram handles real quick so folks know where to find you? Yeah, I'm uh, uh, Instagram is Mighty Mommy with three eyes at the end of Mommy. <laughs> Um, so my promoter page is us underscore strongman underscore Inc. Another underscore. I made it super hard. <laughs> New Jersey. You'll notice a lot of our state reps do that. We just do the us strongman Inc. And then whatever the state is trying to keep it as uniform as possible. Uh, Phoebe's is the same for her promoter page. So just start typing in us underscore. You'll find all of us. <laughs> and, and mine's just United States strongman. It's super easy. And then if you want my personal one, it's just W Wessels one. Awesome. Well, thanks again to all of you for joining this evening. Hopefully we do it again sometime when, the, when there's another big announcement. And again, we thank you very much. Absolutely. Anytime. All right. Thank you. Yeah, all right. Bye, guys.